to episode six, I think, <laughs> of the Dear To Me Knits podcast. Uh, my name is Dearney. You can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram as Dear To Me Knits. Um, yeah, welcome. If you are a new viewer and if you're a return viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate um, having an ongoing conversation with my viewers and and um, making friends and all that fun stuff. So thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, every week, I uh, I just think, you know, this is fun, and one week it's going to be really hard to um, to make myself do it and maybe that's the week that I just never will again. Um, geez, that's kind of deep for the beginning of an episode. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, this week, I'm not gonna lie, uh, has been, it's been hard. Um, I struggle with depression and anxiety in case you didn't know. And um, I've been a little emboldened by um, Amy Florence, Amy Florence, of the Stranded podcast, her most recent episode, she is not shy about um, her struggles with depression and, um, and in her case, self harm. And um, it, uh, I feel a little emboldened to to be frank about um, my struggle. Um, lots of people don't understand. I'm in a position right now where um, I do not have access to a therapist like I did before. And um, so, yeah, those hard weeks are extra hard because um, I don't really have a therapist appointment to look forward to. There's nothing, um, there, there's no promise of release. Of, of these feelings that I have and these thoughts that kind of take over. And so, um, yeah, even right now, I, I'm just like, oh, I, don't have, I don't have to do this. I could stop if I wanted to. Um, so, sorry, that's a very, very heavy way to start off a cheerful episode and if you're a first-time viewer I am so sorry but um yeah it, it's been um, it's been a rough one and so it means an extra lot to me for for you to be watching this right now for me to put this out here to push myself to do that um, and, and for it to be appreciated. I really, really can't tell you how much it means. This is kind of my therapy right now, I guess. My, my podcast has become my therapist appointment a little bit. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I don't intend to spend the whole episode uh, being such a downer. So let's get silly. Um, guys, I have a finished object and um, if you've seen my previous episodes you'll know uh, this has been whole oh body this has been a journey and uh, and a test of my patience and um, a test of my perseverance and I am here to tell you that this beautiful magnificent piece of lace art is done. It is finished. It is blocked. Tomorrow morning, I am taking my future sister-in-law out for facials and massages and coffee at this super fancy like latte art upscale place, okay? And I'm going to give it to her as a gift um, then. <sighs> so excited. I'm so happy. Look at this. Look at it. Oh, isn't it just, whoo, it's emotional. It is emotional, guys. Look at this. 
This is knit out of Juniper Moon Findlay um, lace weight yarn. Uh, the pattern, oh, I wish I brought the book down. Um, the pattern is out of a book called, um, I believe it's called The Art of Kunstricken. Um, it's actually all Chinese. It's completely in Chinese characters and uh, was very painstaking to figure out what to do because basically I was just like oh here's a chart uh I could knit off of that and this is the result I can't I just oh it's so pretty it's so beautiful guys I just love it I'm so proud <laughs> I'm so proud I can't even tell you um it's so delicate and so lovely and um, I know that my my future sister-in-law is just gonna love it and I'm so excited to give it to her tomorrow. So, finished object, yay! And okay, whips. Um, this my, oh my gosh, I'm six minutes in. This is gonna be super short. Um, I don't know, maybe I should blabber some more. Um, okay, so I am at the point in this project where you start going on Ravelry and being like, oh, look at all this other stuff that I could knit because um, I'm sick of this one <laughs> that I'm working on. And I have a tendency to be um, a monogamous knitter. Um, I don't like whips. If I start something, I'm all in until it's done. And if I start something else, almost guaranteed that first project is pretty much just going to be frogged because I just, that's how I operate. I'm not really good at juggling projects. So... And that's pretty much how I am with everything. Like if I'm washing dishes, don't talk to me because I'm washing dishes. <laughs> can't I can't do all the all the things at the same time. Um, I'm very zoned in. So um, this is my heavily heavily adapted column T. Basically, I'm just using the numbers and throwing my own um, my own like texture pattern. And once again, I forgot to bring down the top that is my inspiration. Um, it's just a store-bought top, but I've always loved the stitch pattern of it. Um, and I wanted to emulate that a little bit on this um, to make more of a, just to make short sleeve. Cause it's not long sleeved, but it's like three quarter length and I wanted something a little, I tried it on earlier and it is surprisingly not as loose as I wanted. Um, I did make a size larger than I made my original column T. Um, but I'm hoping with blocking that that will kind of a little bit. Um, but yeah, so here she is. And I'm, you know, I'm like almost like half, a quarter of an inch away from my belly button. So what I plan on doing, I'll give you a close-up of this pretty. So it's got like a yarn over knit two together row and a purl row right there and then this elongated stitch row. Super pretty. And then just a little bit of stockinette in between. Um, I'm going to knit down to about like my, just just below my pants line. And then I'm gonna do a split hem. Um, and probably one by one rib, but maybe two by two, we'll see. Um, and then the last, let me see if I can. The last um, couple of rows 
I am going to use this. Um, and for the bind off, I'll use this. So maybe just like the last one or two rows, just so there's a nice navy blue edge on the ribbing. And then I'll do the same around the neck. I'll pick up and I'll do a rib instead of the roll the rolled stockinette that's on the original. So I'll just do a little bit of rib and then like one, one or two rows of the blue and then the bind off. Um, probably just one. I really do want it to be just like a very small accent on it. Um, and I think that'll be, I think that'll be really pretty and just kind of a little something extra. Um, so yeah, I'll probably have it done for next time. I'll probably have it on next time. There's no reason why I couldn't do that, so. Bye. Um. So yeah, um, I definitely need to stay off Ravelry because I'm feeling, I shouldn't have, okay, so I don't like lists. I know I have pajama pants on, by the way. Um, some people love lists, it helps keep them on track. Basically making a list for me is like writing down all the things that I'm not gonna do. <laughs> um, I just, as soon as I feel like I have to do it, then I just don't want to. Um, and so I made a make nine at the beginning of the year and there are, I really do want to have all of the things that it are, are on it, but I feel pressure to make those things and so I pretty much have been trying to make like everything else besides the things on the list. Now in my defense, like right now, it's balls freaking hot over a hundred degree heat index. So I'm not really feeling a weekender, you know what I mean? But um, I do want to maybe, maybe start like a, uh, not a sizzle and pop, um, speckle and pop uh, shawl so I can get that done. Um, just so I kind of actually do stick to my goals that I started at the beginning of the year. But I also am strongly, strongly considering doing the tarmac tank from the newest um, Pom Pom Quarterly. I do not remember the name of the designer on that. Um, so I will put that, you know, on the bottom and have a link to Ravelry and all that stuff in the description box. But, um, I really, really like that tank top. And I have, let me see. Oh, yeah. Sorry, you're getting the full pajama pant shot right there. Um, I do have this cotton that I bought for um, a different tank top um, that I decided not to make because I would have the same problem with it that I had with the 003 tank that I frogged and restarted as my column, column T, um, that the, the straps would just not work for me for, like, I don't like my, which I'm having that issue with this shirt. I don't like for my bra straps to show. I am not one to show my body a lot. I like loose clothes. I'm not a huge fan of like cleavage. I don't like my bra straps to show. So, um, yeah, I don't think I'll end up making that even though it's super duper cute. Um, that designer is really talented and, um, I'm pretty sure it was a free pet. If I can't remember if it was a free pattern or not. Um, but she seems like not a very well known designer. Um, but her stuff's really cute. Uh, so I have this um, Drops Loves You. It's just um, unmercerized. It's basically kind of like sugar and cream except it's fingering weight. Um, and the plies are a little, it's a little ni more nicely plied. Um, 
I hear my husband walking around. It's like 10.30 at night. Um, but like I said, we're, um, I'm going out with um, my future sister-in-law in the morning. And so I won't have time to record tomorrow. So I'm recording today. So um, anyway, yeah, I really want to make the tarmac tank. Um, it has nice wide straps and kind of an A-line shape. Um, like lots of garter, pretty texture, and then like I-cord trim. <sighs> I just really like it. It speaks to me. So, um, I'm conflicted. But we'll see. I also don't have the yarn, like all of the yarn I need for the tarmac tank. I would have to order some. And I kind of went bananas with the, um, Tits Out Collective that went not yesterday yesterday was sunday today's monday um which i'm uploading this tuesday but a week from yesterday the tits out collective like big sale i bought a lot none of it's arrived yet um which i'm not worried about um i'll show it next time but yeah i really should lay off the yarn buying for a bit um Okay, so I did have a little bit of cast on itis, um, and my daughter wanted to, oh, she got some stash enhancement I should have brought. By the way, um, I've shown this bag on the podcast before, um, and I said that it was um, from Sockinet Zombies, uh, which, as far as I could tell, was um, kind of a knitting blog. And I couldn't figure out, like, they don't sell anything. So where is this coming from? And a wonderful viewer commented, I think her name's Colette, and told me that this bag is actually by the Silver Shed USA, who I will link. Um, and I actually um, corrected the links on the previous episode that I showed this bag in already. Um, uh, they're on Etsy. And it is one of the Stockinette Zombies mother who owns the shop. And her bags are super cute. Um, it's, a, it's a very nice uh, shop. And I do really like this dumpling shape. I like kind of folding it down to make a little, you know, a little basket. And then folding it back up when you're done. I, I really like that. Um, so this is Lydia's. Uh, Boneyard Shawl by Stephen West. Oh, she's in the middle of a row. She's got stitch markers falling off and all kinds of... Hang on a second. Hang on. Oh, no. That goes... She, she has a very short attention span and a very low tolerance for what's the word difficulty I did not do that right I skipped a yarn over um sorry I'm trying to talk and do this at the same time so I can get to the end of the row so you can see but I messed up yarn over so okay um so this is the bone yarn shawl by Stephen West um it is basically just a stockinette triangle, but every few rows there's um, like a garter row to make a little bit of interest. And then the, the border of it is garter. Um, it was the first shawl pattern I ever used. So Lydia came to me and was like, I'm bored, let's knit. I don't want to knit any of the things I already have on the needles. Uh, I want to knit with my new... Yakagani uh, yarn. And I was like, I was like, okay, whatever, that's fine. So, girlfriend, what is this mess? Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what she did. Um, I'm just gonna fudge it. Um, 
So I was like, okay, well, how cute would it be to do um, her first shawl be the same as my first shawl? And like I said, I mean, it's just stocking it with a garter row every once in a while. Um, he does have the pattern, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. He does have it written so that you do um, make ones as the increases. Um, but he'd suggest that you could um, do yarn overs instead, which is easier for her. So that's what we're doing is yarn overs. So here's, here's her little, hang on, little bit here. Oh my gosh, that green is, <laughs> the camera does not like it. Um, there, you can kind of see. Um, there's no uh, garter ridge yet on hers. Um, I was going, I'm cast on with her, and I was going row for row with her, but she, yeah, she just doesn't want to pick it up, and I'm like, well, I, I mean, I have cast on itis. I want to knit something else, <laughs> so I can't just let it sit here and not be worked on. I don't do that, you know, I, I knit. So I will show you her cute little, her cute little stitch markers. Oh, come on. And I, it's a Hello Kitty, in case you can't see, and then a little flower, um, which I was totally blocking my face when I said that. Um, I feel so bad because, you know, I want people um, that are hard of hearing or deaf to be able to maybe read my lips or something, and I, I really want to look into um, making it more accessible. Um, there is a wonderful girl that I follow on Instagram. Uh, her page is called Marissa, Marissa Meow Knits, I believe. Or maybe just Marissa Meow. But um, she, she uh, is deaf. And um, she advocates a lot for um, accessibility to hard of hearing and deaf people. Um, and that's something that I really want to um, work towards um, because I believe that everybody deserves to um, to enjoy knitting and and enjoy podcasts and everything. So I really want to work on that. Um, that yarn is Yakagani Yarns. Uh, in the Monsoc base, in the green apple colorway. Um, which, it was so cute. Um, we got it at a yarn festival um, here in Indiana. And um, we had previously visited her at a booth in Kentucky at a yarn festival. Um, and Lydia really liked that colorway, but she didn't like any of the bases that it was on. So um, she dyed up a batch and had one set aside and waiting for Lydia when we went up to um, Franklin, Indiana. So that was just so cute. I, I really like her. Um, she's a wonderful person and um, a really, really great yarn dyer. Um, I have a few skeins in my own stash from her. So. Um, okay, and then I will show mine, which apparently I'm also in the middle of a row. <laughs> like mother, like daughter, right? <laughs> okay, oh, I'm on a pearl side. Um, okay, so I'll, I can pearl without looking as long as I don't think about it. <laughs> um, so this is actually in a new bag that I will show you after I finish showing you my um, project that's in it. Um, I will warn you that if you have little ones around, if you're watching with a little one, um, there's not profanity, but there is some adult humor um, if your child is the right age or is prone to repeating things, you might want to 
skip ahead a minute or two, um, I would hate for, you know, awkwardness to ensue. <laughs> so, um, just, just, that's my little disclaimer. Um, so first I'll show my shawl though. So this, this yarn is, um, I'm not sure what the base is. This was dyed for me by my friend Kim. She does not dye t for sale. Um, she just dabbles. Um, but I have been the fortunate recipient of many of her beautifully dyed skeins of yarn. And I love them. And I've held on to this one for a while, so I'm really excited to, um, to work it up. So this is my Boneyard Shawl. And like I said, there's there's a nice stockinette there, and then the, a garter a garter ridge, and then the yarn over edge and spine in the middle. And I'm using um, this stitch marker. I believe is from an Etsy seller from England, or at least the UK somewhere, um, called Rebecca's Room. And then this is one of my little freebies from um, Rose Hill Yarns. Um, so yeah, just a, a little, um, that yarn's probably like super wash wool of some kind. I don't think it's merino. It's not quite that soft, um, but it's definitely still next to skin soft. It's just slightly toothy. Um, okay, so I will show the front of the bag first so you have time to Skip plus you can, uh, it's only awkward on one side. So I'll show the pretty side first. Um, this, oh, the light's blowing it out so bad. Look at that, that gorgeous floral. Um, this is a wee bra bag, B-R-A-W, wee bra bag, made for me by the same girl that made my cute little elephant pouch which I don't have handy. Um, gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's crap everywhere at my feet. Um, the baby comes in here and goes wild I, while I was blocking the that doily and he got into all kinds of stuff and I just never cleaned it up. Okay, so, um, so it's got two little pockets in the front and a cute, sweet little drawstring. Um, I love this color of like burnt orange um, and it's lined in a pretty um, like turquoise dark dark teal um, absolutely love it oh it's, it's very well made um, it was a custom order I messaged her and um, told her exactly what I wanted and man she delivered um, She's just starting out. I really, really, really highly recommend um, you check her out. I know a lot of people like the big names, you know, and not that I wouldn't absolutely poop my pants if I were to ever get my hands on like Hedgehog or La Bien Aime or Hugh Loco. Don't get me wrong. But I really, really love little tiny indie makers just you know they they're just a what she's a one woman show um and just starting out and those are the kind of shops that i like to support um it just means a lot that every sale just means the world to them um and like, okay, so like Beauty Mark Yarns. I loved her stuff, I bought it, she messaged me to thank me, and the next thing I know, we message each other almost every day. Um, and I would consider her a very good friend. So, um, you know, I really feel like um, foregoing small um, businesses like that and in favor of the big business, you really miss out on an opportunity to build up um, your fellow members of the community um, and frankly to just make friends if that's your your thing because I love meeting new people and I really like when people are nice to me on the internet <laughs> and 
and um, especially Mariah and Robin and Olivia. Um, they're all so nice. And I, I feel privileged to, to know them and support them. So uh, that's my little spiel on that. Now, if you're easily offended, you might want to skip ahead or cover your eyes and ears because it's about to get naughty. So this is what it says on the back side. I love a good fingering. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, Mariah knows this because she has seen my mother and me um, in the throes of of drunken jauntiness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, my family loves um, raunchy, ornery, um, dirty humor. We just do. If there's an innuendo to be made, we will make it. Uh, <laughs> just anything and everything. It cracks my mother-in-law up because I'll say something and just look at her and be like, ah, ah, ah. she's just like, oh, you rascal. <laughs> so <laughs> I showed it to her and I said, don't you think that's just so me? Isn't this so me? She goes, oh yeah, that's dad. So you, <laughs> she's like, Oh, you know, it's just so cute. <laughs> so, uh, oh my gosh, I'm blushing. Um, it's so funny because despite the fact that I, I really, I like curse words, I like dirty humor, um, I get easily embarrassed and like super shy about it too. <laughs> so yeah, that's my, that's my little, uh, my cheeky little bag that I love so much so um i'm obviously i'll link her shop and i i really do um implore you to uh maybe check out a small time shop that you normally wouldn't um have given a second look um because i i all um, always i know i can't even say almost i literally am always just as pleased uh, um, with the product itself as if I had had gotten like Madeline Tosh and um, and I get a friend out of the deal too so hey um, oh golly I was ready to move on to the next thing but y'all that is it it's a short one this week um, Next week will be a little bit longer because I'll have all my Tits Out Collective swag to show you. Um, I do, she's never going to see it. She doesn't know me from anybody, you know. But I do want to give a super huge shout out to um, Scandier Knits. Um, she, well, first of all, she's helping make this amazing uh, protest blanket for a, um, a yarn shop in England. Um, if you have not seen that, I will, uh, I'll have a link to that also. Um, it is not something that I intend to ever talk about um, on my podcast, Politics, um, but I am a bit of a feminist and... Um, I really appreciate her um, her doing that. First of all, the the blanket or you know banner, whatever you want to call it. Um, but also, um, she she pointed out something that um, I don't fault anybody for not any other the other any of the other yarn dyers and other um, goodie makers for not. Uh, saying by any means um, I think it's beautiful to see women supporting women um, but she pointed out that not everybody who has breasts is a woman and not every woman has breasts for multiple reasons whether it be mastectomy or um, you know gender identification uh, things and um, I think this is something that I, I had a conversation about this week that got me a little upset. 
um, because the point was totally missed. Um, just because you are not a part of a community doesn't mean that you can't advocate for that community. Um, I am a woman. I identify as fully woman. Um, but I'll go up to bat for for any any notch on that gender spectrum um, because we're all people um, and, and we're all valid and you know we're we're lives we're not um, you know we're all worth something um, and it's important to me to to let people know that even if I've never, even if I don't know you, even if I've never met you, I know there's people that watch this podcast that I have never and probably will never meet or know. Um, and as this podcast grows, I'm sure that number is only going to grow. But I want you to know that you are dear to me. Um, The, the name of my, I'm going to cry, the name of my podcast is called Dear to Me because of the, the story behind my mother naming me, my name is Dearney, but it also holds a lot of meaning to me because um, for my entire life, that's something that I felt very strongly about is people just don't always see their worth. Um, people will always discount themselves a little bit and put everybody else just a little bit higher um, in my experience and I just I feel very very passionately about reminding people that they are worth something that they are not any less worthy than anybody else and so um, I, I said last week that I was going to make it a priority to remind you, and I will remind you again, you are so dear to me. So thank you for watching.